Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the end of the 11th season of the Redlands Forum program series. My name is Shelley Stockton. I'm the Director of Alumni and Community Relations at the University of Redlands, and it's my pleasure to welcome you this evening on behalf of our sponsor organizations, of course, our wonderful hosts at Esri and also the University of Redlands Town and Gown. All right, now let's see if I can get my slide to advance. There we go. If you don't regularly receive invitations to the Redlands Forum events, you can just send your name and email address to redlandsforum at esri.com as it shows you on the screen. Also tonight, we will be having a Q&A at the end of the session, and you will find the um, Q&A link in the box at the bottom of your screen if you hover your mouse there. The Q&A is um, there at the far right, and if you click on that, it will open up a dialogue box into which you can type your questions, and we'll be happy to pose them to our presenters. Also, if you are not seeing this as a full screen um, and you have the so-called Brady Bunch effect, all the little um, boxes on your screen, you should go up to the upper right corner and um, click on the, the box up there and make sure that you present the speaker view. All right, you know that Town & Gown is our um, co-sponsor and uh, we have been doing a lot of virtual events this year, but I'm excited to tell you that Town & Gown is back uh, with our first in-person event, a welcome back uh, reception that was is free and is gonna be held on June 30th. So you can find out more information about how to attend that and come and renew your membership for the next fiscal year. We run with the university's fiscal year that starts July 1st. So that will be on the evening of June 30th on the university campus at 7 p.m. All right, what is coming up next? Well, what's coming up next is summertime. So those of you that have come to Redlands Forum programs for a number of years know that we are typically dark in the summer. Esri has their user conference and the university um, of course is also dark in the summer. Um, so we're not quite sure when we are going to be coming back or in what um, modality we are really looking forward to getting back to in-person events um, in the fall. We're just not sure how soon in the fall. It will depend on um, the guidelines from the state of California and obviously San Bernardino County. Um, we also learned last night that um, our our great um, sponsor and, and speaker identifier extraordinaire, uh, Jack Dangerman, uh, may have a couple of guests coming in August that would allow us to open uh, the next year's forum series um, earlier than we normally do. So I guess what I would tell you is that um, stay close to your email, as I know you do, and um, look for information um, from us, we'll um, try to give you some notice of um, when we'll be starting up again in the fall. But in the meantime, I hope that all of you have a wonderful summer and we appreciate all of your support um, all of this year. I'd also like to really um, give a call out to our, our technical support folks at Esri, um, specifically Zach Long and his um, technical compatriots, um, Zolt Zador and um, Joel Hurst, uh, Joel's working with us tonight um, for all the support that they've given us all this year. Um, they also support us when we're in person, but it's been really important, um, all the things that they've been able to make happen for us um, this year, and we really, really appreciate them. All right, moving on to the main event um, tonight. Um, each year, the Smiley Heritage Tours, which is a committee of our AK Smiley Public Library, um, take fourth graders in Redlands on, on all of Redlands Unified School District as well as um, private schools on a tour of the city of Redlands and the surrounding communities. And it's a, a historical tour where students learn about Redlands history, our landmarks, and also about the many people and places from all walks of life who have contributed to making Redlands such a special place. But what do you do when you can't put a whole classroom full of students on a bus and drive them around because we're in the midst of a global pandemic? This program tonight is going to show you how the leadership of the Heritage Tours 
and also some innovative um, educators from the Redlands Unified School District came up with a unique solution. So you're going to hear from um, a number of different people um, tonight, and then uh, most all of them will be available for the Q&A at the end. Um, starting out, we're going to hear from the leadership of both the school district and the Smiley Library, followed by leadership from the Smiley Heritage Tours Committee in the persons of Tish Sandoz and Serena Davis, and then from Redlands Unified's Director of Instructional Technology and Accountability. And then finally, from the Redlands Unified teachers, Jennifer Hurst and Olivia Davidson, who will give you a taste of the new virtual pieces of the Smiley Heritage Tours and how they will continue to be used uh, even post pandemic. I also wanna mention that this program tonight is being recorded and it will be posted on the Redlands Forum webpage um, in the next couple of weeks. So if you know of people who are interested but weren't able to make it tonight, you'll be able to refer them to um, the Redlands Forum webpage to watch a recording. So with that, I will um, get the program started. Please help me welcome uh, these wonderful representatives from Redlands Unified School District and from the AK Smiley Public Library. Good evening and welcome to the Redlands Forum. My name is Mauricio Ariano, and I proudly serve as the superintendent of the Redlands Unified School District. I have the honor tonight of introducing an innovative project done collaboratively between the Redlands Unified School District and community partners involved in the cherished Smiley Heritage Tour. Each year, our fourth grade students have the opportunity to participate in a tour, visiting many significant and important locations related to the rich history of the city of Redlands. This tour has been a staple of our educational program since 1983. The COVID-19 pandemic created a lot of challenges and forced our district to deliver instruction in a very different way. Regretfully, in 2020, the pandemic forced us to cancel the tour for the first time ever. This year, we were determined to not allow the pandemic to prohibit our students from having this experience. We wanted to find a different way to experience the Smiley Heritage Tour as we had found a way to deliver a robust learning experience using distance learning. Using our commitment statement of enhanced learning through innovation taken from our multi-year vision titled RUSD 2025, we set out to create a 21st century virtual Smiley Heritage Tour experience, and so we did. I want to thank RUSD staff and the community volunteers representing the Smiley Heritage Tours and the Smiley Public Library for putting together a wonderful, innovative, and cutting edge virtual tour that our students and families can enjoy together and learn from together. It is with great pride and a great sense of community that I welcome you to watch the first public presentation of the virtual Smiley Heritage Tour. Please enjoy the experience. Good evening, I'm Don McHugh, Director of AK Smiley Public Library in Redlands. Thank you for allowing us the opportunity to share with you a little bit about our Smiley Heritage Tours program. The library board and I were very pleased back in 2015 when the idea was broached about becoming the new home for the highly successful fourth grade Heritage Tours project. Our former director was the co-author of the original tour script in 1982, and we like to think that our heritage room at the Smiley is the go-to location for anything about the history of Redlands. A couple of decades ago, back when I was archivist in the Smiley's Heritage Room and curator of the Lincoln Memorial Shrine, I was installing an exhibit at the shrine with the front door open. A heritage tour came by and the tour guide asked if her students could take a brief look inside. Usually they just walked by the shrine while the guide told a little of its history. I said yes and couldn't resist the opportunity to give them a 10 minute micro tour. It was such a success that we incorporated an inside tour into every subsequent heritage tour visit. I love the enthusiasm of the children as they learned about Shrine founder Robert Watchorn and his passion that everyone should learn more about Abraham Lincoln. Right up till March 2020, I'd still do an occasional Shrine Smiley Heritage Tour for the emotional lift that children would always provide. Even in this difficult past year with its many challenges, the dedicated volunteers of the Smiley Heritage Tour Committee continued their fine work. We are grateful to all of them, but particularly to Serena Davis and Tish Sandoz for making this video tour, which you are about to see, a reality. Finally, none of the committee's exemplary work would be possible without the great support of our partners at the Redlands Unified School District. 
All of us share the conviction that having a well-founded knowledge of the history of our community needs to be an important part of every child's education. Thank you. Hello, I'm Serena Davis, a volunteer with Smiley Heritage Tours. Thank you for inviting us to the Redlands Forum and thank you to those in attendance. We're very happy to be here this evening with our friends from Redlands Unified School District to tell you about our fourth grade heritage tours. I'd like to take a couple of minutes to give you a little background and then Tish will give you a look at our on the bus experiences we share with the kids. Smiley Heritage Tours is a volunteer committee of the AK Smiley Public Library. Our goal is to encourage interest in the history and cultural heritage of Redlands and its surrounding areas. The tours are provided for fourth grade students of our area. They last about four hours and include a few off the bus stops at University of Redlands, Burridge Mansion, the Fisk Burgess Home, AK Smiley Public Library, Lincoln Shrine, and Kimberly Crest. Heritage Tours began in 1982 as an auxiliary of the Assistance League of Redlands. Several of their sustaining members came up with the idea as a way to complement the fourth grade focus on California history. They took the idea to Dr. Larry Burgess, our local historian and director of Smiley Library at the time, and he agreed to work with them on a tour highlighting important areas and points of interest in Redlands history. Those of you who know Larry know we can always count on him for added color to any story. They also recruited Tom Atchley, another favorite local historian and retired history teacher at Redlands High School. Of course, none of this would be possible without the partnership forged with Redlands Unified School District. Our relationship with the district and their support of the tours has been key to its success. On March 17, 1983, the fourth graders went on their first heritage tour. Fittingly, March 17th is Albert and Alfred Smiley's birthday. You probably know that we have Albert Smiley to thank for the library and his identical twin brother, Alfred, who purchased the library's first set of books. The brothers contributed greatly to our town and are considered Redlands patron saints. You'll hear more about them on the bus with Tish. Our first tour even made the daily facts. In June of 2015, Heritage Tours became affiliated with AK Smiley Public Library and adopted our new name, Smiley Heritage Tours. It's a great fit, especially since we have taken advantage of the library's many resources over the years, the people and materials, especially in the Heritage Room. With COVID, this school year has certainly been different, but typically we give between 50 and 60 tours each year to all Redlands Public Schools. That figure includes area private schools as well. With our 40 active volunteers, we serve about 2000 students each year. In addition to the tour, we visit the classrooms a few days before the tour and give a realia presentation. It's our collection of a variety of very old objects. We show the students household items, tools, candle molds, canning jars. We even have authentic obsidian and bone arrowheads. We do this to prime them for the tour a little and help them get a feel for what it was like to live here over hundred years ago. Then they're ready for their tour. Let's join Tish on the bus. Hi, I'm Tish Sandoz, and I would also like to thank the Redlands Forum for inviting us to present the Smiley Heritage Tours Program, along with our collaborative partners from Redlands Unified School District. My assignment is to take you on the live bus tour, concluding with a pivot to the virtual. Before we begin, I have a disclaimer. The pictures in the presentation represent favorites we've collected over the years, and in many cases are not current images. For example, some of you, including Shelley Stockton, may recognize a young man on the left. He graduated from college a few years ago. I suspect that a number of you will spot other familiar faces as well. Redlands Foothill Groves, the last fruit packing house in Redlands, is the first pause on the tour. Here we take a look at the loading area and the adjacent Mill Creek Zanha, Zanke to locals. This ditch was built by Native American Indians of the area for Mission San Gabriel in 1819 to bring water to the Mission Estancia Ranch, further downstream. 
We then crossed the railroad tracks, which used to carry the oranges to distant markets. Today, the fruit is shipped in trucks. Some days, we're in luck and get to see a truck being loaded. After all, how can you do justice to early Redlands without starting with the importance of water, the navel orange, and the railroad to the growth of the town? At Georgiana Manor, we introduce Victorian architecture and cut stone curbs and talk about the skilled artisans who came to Redlands to do the work. The group always enjoys figuring out the purpose of the brass ring on top of the hitching post. As we proceed through the day, the fourth graders get very good at spotting typical Victorian features on their own. Fish scales, the use of multicolors, gingerbread, sunburst, etc. They also know that when they see cut stone curbs, they are in an older part of Redlands. The steps in front of the administration building at the University of Redlands provides a great view of the mountains plus the site of Big Bear Dam and the traditional homeland of the San Manuel Band of Mission Indians. Before continuing the drive through campus, the class gathers and yells the name of the school or school mascot as loudly as they can to create an echo as their voices bounce off the chapel. Not surprisingly, the six street stone houses are a favorite. The fanciful designs on this house include a cat, dog, seagull, and airplane. The stone house across the street has a man on a burrow, a cactus, a scorpion, and more. We recently learned from the owner, Mary Roque, who grew up here, that the owner of the house in the 30s did the stonework himself, bringing all the special rocks from Arizona. The students love telling us and each other what they discover. The drive through downtown gives us a chance to talk about the almost overnight growth of the town with the arrival of the railroad and adequate water supplies from Big Bear Dam in 1888. We also point out the importance of the use of brick in the downtown business buildings, as well as, of course, the missing nine on the pediment of the Finney Building. The library is a much anticipated stop. On the steps, we talk about how the library we enjoy today results from the foundational gifts of the Smiley Brothers, as well as the continuing support of many donors over the years. One of the stories we tell is of a young girl of the same age as a class who learned that the library was having a hard time raising funds for a new paint job. She decided to help out. That year, instead of receiving gifts on her birthday, she asked her friends to give a donation to the library. A few days later, she proudly presented Larry Burgess, then library director, with a check for $40. As the class enters the library, we give them a checklist of fun items to look for as they walk quietly in single file through the building. In the young reader's room, each receives a bookmark before exploring the room to have a closer look at the storybook-themed stained glass windows. For many, this visit is not the first time at, in the library. At the Lincoln Shrine, Associate Archivist Maria Carrillo's impassioned guidance brings home the greatness of Lincoln's leadership in holding the nation together and abolishing slavery while confronted with the attempt to dissolve the Union during America's bloodiest and most divisive conflict, the Civil War. Upon leaving, we urge the group to return with their families as there's much more to see and learn at the shrine. The core message of this stop is the importance of community and Grace Mullen's strong belief that music should be available for all and that it should be free. If time permits, we have the group walk across the stage and take bows. Back on the bus, we talk about the meanings of the words inscribed above the stage backdrop, the Priscillus, without vision, the people perish. On the drive to the site of the former Estancia, outpost of Mission San Gabriel, the focus is on the first people of the valley and their recruitment to help dig the Zanja and raise crops to feed the mission population. 
The Assistencia we see today was constructed in the early 1930s on the same site. No tour of Redlands is complete without a stop at Mori Mansion. It is a wonderful example of Victorian architecture and even has an onion dome. The students are most impressed when we tell them that Mrs. Mori raised the money to build the house by selling small navel oranges from her nursery to eager local ranchers. Mr. Mori, a talented carpenter, built the house. Since the beginning of Heritage Tours, Charlotte and Larry Burgess have generously allowed us to include their home and grove. The visit continues the themes of Victorian architecture and the importance of the Naval Orange to Redlands. Charlotte and Larry embody the value of giving back to the community in many ways, including in their decision to sign an agreement to protect the land forever as agriculture open space. If the tour coincides with the day that either of them are home, they often give the class an extra treat and invite them in for a quick look. The expansive grounds of the Burridge Mansion make it a welcoming lunch stop. The students are fascinated to have a chance to explore the downstairs rooms and property. Those who've already visited with other groups are excited to return and tell us about the activities and adventures they've enjoyed at the Burridge on prior visits. In relating the story of the Burridge Mansion, we emphasize that while it was once a party house for very wealthy people. Today, thanks to the generosity of Tim and Carol Rushford, the house and gardens are dedicated solely to the happiness of children. As the fourth graders proceed up the walk to Kimberly Crest, we ask them to count the number of steps. This counting game was the idea of an early volunteer, most likely a recently retired teacher, and it sure works. Before entering the house, a special heritage volunteer groups the group and tells them the history of the house and gardens. The students are amazed to learn upon her death, Mrs. Shirk honored her promise that she would give the house, the furnishings and the grounds to the people of Redlands if they raised the money to save the adjacent Prospect Park from development. It is hard for fourth graders to comprehend that this is their house. But of course, with ownership comes responsibility. We enter the house in smaller two groups to give each a chance for a closer look at the house, which today is maintained just as it was when Mrs. Shirt lived there. It is fun to ask what the bowl to the left of the place setting on the dining room table might have been used for. Those who have seen Shrek 2 don't always identify it as a finger bowl but they do know it's used for cleaning sticky fingers. Outside, we gather by the back pond and enjoy the treat of Mrs. Shirt's ginger cookies baked by one of our volunteers. Of course, a few moments are spent looking for frogs and carp in the pond. To my knowledge, we've only had one child fall in. Fortunately, the pond is not deep, so the only damage was wet feet which probably felt good, especially if it was a hot day. The Smiley Heritage Tours coloring book is the most recent addition to the program. About five years ago, Kim Cavanaugh, then the RUSD administrator charged with overseeing our program, suggested we add a coloring book of the tour for each participant to extend the experience. And moreover, she would do the artwork. Heritage volunteers would provide the text. This past year, when it became apparent that the live tours would not be possible, our USD came to us with the idea that we could combine forces and create a virtual tour using the coloring book as the core inspiration. Of course, we agreed and set to work. At the outset, we concurred that the goal of the virtual tour was not to recreate the comprehensive nature of the live bus tour, but to serve as a complementary resource using new tools to explore Redlands in different ways. Serena and I put our heads together to think about how we could take the tour a step further. We took 360 photos of the interiors of all the off the bus stops and shots of other locations throughout Redlands. We wrote tour narrative, text for clickable exploration points, and gathered historic photos of the various sites. Meanwhile, the RUSD Instructional Technology Department, led by Jamie Quartz, worked on developing an interactive website adding additional content and putting it all together. 
Thanks to the generous support of community members and Heritage volunteers, we were able to add drone flyovers followed by live interviews of the tour hosts. You will see the results in the upcoming presentation. It has been an amazing experience to collaborate with the RUSD talented team. I will now turn the presentation over to our partners, Jamie Kortz, Jennifer Hunt, and Olivia Davison, who will showcase the virtual tour as an example of Redlands Unified School District's innovative response to the challenges of COVID-19. Thank you. Greetings, my name is Jamie Kortz. I'm the Director of Instructional Technology and Accountability here in Redlands Unified School District. The demonstration that you are about to see is a product of an innovative mindset, perseverance, and collaboration on the part of many educators. Much credit goes to the project leads, Olivia Davison and Jen Hunt, whose passion and dedication helped make a lofty goal into reality. I believe that the driving force of all of our efforts is the great sense of pride that we have in our community, as well as our determination to not let COVID-19 strip our students of very important traditions that generations before have had a chance to experience. I could remember sitting down last fall with members of the Educational Services Division and brainstorming ways that we could bring this cherished heritage tour to our students, knowing that it had been canceled in 2020 and was going to be canceled again in 2021. That's how the concept of a virtual tour was born. The only roadblock is that none of us had ever created one, and we had very few practical examples to go by. So the challenge and fun of our task was to actually invent one. Some of the technologies that were used to create this project were 360 degree filming, drone filming, ArcGIS and Google mapping, we video digital storytelling, immersive reader for accessibility, Google Sites, Google Docs, Google Forms, ThingLink virtual reality application, audio recording and mixing applications, Adobe character animation applications. It's important to state that although many of these programs we already knew, many of the technologies we did not know and learned just for this project. In a moment, you will see, you will see the results of all, our, all of our efforts. We hope that you can see the inspiration and the care we all have for our community and students woven into the virtual tour. And we hope that it also provides you with some excitement and interest into our special town. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Olivia Davison. Redlands is not only where I teach, but also where I grew up. I moved to Redlands right before I started first grade, just a few steps from the Redlands Community Hospital. I attended Smiley Elementary, where I had the opportunity to attend the Smiley Heritage Tour as a fourth grader. I then went on to attend Cope Middle School where I was in my father's eighth grade algebra class. And yes, he still teaches there today. I also played softball for Redlands High School and was a part of the class of 2007. After leaving Redlands to attend college in Orange County and begin my teaching career, I knew that I wanted to return to Redlands at some point to serve the community and schools that inspired me to pursue a career in education. I've been with the district since 2016 and currently live in Redlands with my husband and children who will too grow up and attend school in our hometown. We live just a short few steps from the Zanha River and one of our favorite things to do is walk along the Orange Blossom Trail. Jennifer and I are excited to share this project with all of you and thank you for inviting us. This project was just a small idea from a few years ago that evolved into something we could have never even dreamed of. It pushed us as educators and we are very proud of all that we have accomplished and learned along the way. Hello. I'm Jennifer Hunt. My family also has strong ties to the community. We moved to Redlands in 1978 when my father, David Center, took a job as a respiratory therapist at Redlands Community Hospital. I grew up the Redlands way, performed in the Great Y Circus, played in the Sankey, picnicked at Ford Park, and checked out books from A.K. Smiley Public Library. I graduated from Redlands High School in 1989 and began my teaching career at Cope Middle School in 1993. My husband, Corey Hunt, recently retired from the Redlands Police Department after 28 years of dedicated service. Additionally, any teacher who received their credential from the University of Redlands before 2011 
knows my beautiful mother-in-law, credential analyst, Linda Hunt. Olivia and I have so much of our own history in the city of Redlands. We were excited to make this tour virtual, providing equitable access to all fourth grade students in our community. We sincerely appreciate the opportunity to share our efforts with you. We've worked hard on this project for several months and we are very proud of the finished product. This project is a collaborative effort that involved our entire instructional technology team, Tish and Serena, and other community members. When we began brainstorming ways to make the tour virtual, we took inspiration from our teammate, Caleb Rothi, who created a version using Google Earth. It soon became clear that in order to make this the best possible experience for our fourth grade students, we would need to create an interactive mixed media presentation. Throughout the process, there was a bit of a learning curve as Olivia and I learned how to create 360 degree tours and interactive maps. We worked with Tish and Serena to use the 360 degree camera. Fortunately, these incredible officers of the Smiley Heritage Tours were willing and able to get amazing images at each of the sites. As we take you through this showcase, you will see the website we built and the interactive maps with all 17 tour locations. The homepage of the website provides students with brief directions to get them exploring. Smiley Heritage Tours also provide each student with a coloring book that follows along with the tour. Students, teachers, and families can use this as a resource alongside the virtual tour. Let's begin with some of the locations that students view while they are seated on the bus. The tour begins at Georgiana Manor on High Avenue. Many of the photos were taken by Tish, and the illustrations were drawn by Kim Cavanaugh. The text that accompanies the pictures are from the coloring books that are provided to each student. Because the map is interactive through ThingLink, Immersive Reader is embedded in all text. With Immersive Reader, we are able to increase accessibility to all students with the features it provides. For example, students can listen to the text in the speed and voice in which they choose. Georgiana Manor was built in 1888, the same year Redlands was incorporated as a city, which permitted it to have elected officials such as a mayor and treasurer. Students can also change the text. They can increase the size or they can decrease the size. They can also increase or decrease the spacing, as well as change the theme of the font and the text. Some reading preferences they can also choose is they can focus either line by line or they can read in chunks. Chunking is a great tool to help struggling readers. Also, there are a variety of translation tools available so students can change the text, either word or entire document into a language in which they choose. Here, I've translated this document to Spanish. Providing accessibility to students was one of our main goals throughout the project. And the Immersive Reader was a great tool that allowed us to ensure all students had equitable access to all parts of the tour. Once students return to the tour, there are also a few stops where students can see pictures of a few notable locations. The next drive-by stop is the Mill Creek Zanha. Students can click and read a short description of the Zanha for now, but we'll get a more detailed view through a story map in the tour as well. Jennifer will tell you more about that later in our presentation. The third drive-by location is the University of Redlands Admin Building. As Tish previously noted, this is a stop where students usually get the opportunity to get off the bus. But for our virtual tour, we just provide a short description of the building. Students can drive by with their families and see this location from their car or get out and visit if they'd like to do so on their own. There are many short stops along the way, but there are also a few fun images we are able to add for students such as original images of their schools when they were first built. Take a look at Franklin Elementary in 1912 and 1929. Another popular landmark we couldn't leave out is the Redlands R that resides on the San Bernardino Mountains from Redlands facing north. If you live in Redlands, 
You have seen the Redlands are on the mountains on a clear, sunny Californian day. But Redlands students probably often wonder, how did it get there? The R on the Mountain started as a University of Redlands freshman project in 1913. Our goal for this interactive map was to allow students to get a glimpse of each location on the tour, but also to be easily followed with the guidance of a caregiver or adult if students want to see these stops in person. Before the pandemic, the in-person tour included stops where students would get off the bus and explore five locations the Lincoln Shrine Memorial, A.K. Smiley Public Library, Fisk Burgess House and Beverly Ranch, the Burridge Mansion, and Kimberly Crest House and Gardens. This off-the-bus experience is a chance for students to see the grounds as well as hear stories and historical facts from volunteers, site directors, and homeowners. To help us recreate this experience virtually, Hector Becerra of Salud Marketing and Tony Ramirez of Tiger Teeth Productions filmed and edited drone footage and short introduction videos at each of these special locations. We then enlisted the help of student narrators to read information and talk about each location. We used the online platform WeVideo to create short films using images provided by curators at the location and historical details provided by Smiley Heritage Tours volunteers, Tish and Serena. Keeping in mind that we're creating this for fourth grade students, we worked with our team's digital storyteller, Dwayne Cowles, and added animated puppets to each of the videos. Here's the video from the 14th location, which is the third off the bus portion of the tour, the Fisk Burgess House. Beverly Ranch is a historical orange grove that was planted in 1887. Elizabeth and John Fisk built the house in 1890. John Fisk was an early realtor in Redlands. The Fisk house is a fine example of Victorian architecture and has many typical Victorian features. Let's have a closer look. Here you can see the fancy gingerbread woodwork and on the outer walls there are fish scale shingles. At the top of the house, there is a sunburst, and the house is painted with a lot of different colors. Their daughter, Helen Fisk, inherited Beverly Ranch in 1944 and took over managing the grove. She sold the house in 1977 to the current owners, Charlotte and Larry Burgess. Let's go meet Mr. and Mrs. Burgess. Hello, I'm Larry Burgess. And I'm Charlotte Burgess. Welcome to the Fisk House on Beverly Ranch. Built in 1890, the house uh, is well over 130 years old, and we're pleased to have you come today. And keep in mind, they first built just a barn and they lived in the barn. And there were no trees, nothing around. And now 130 years later, you will enjoy seeing what the house looks like today. The house is beautiful Queen Anne exterior is matched by uh, a beautiful and simply elegant interior. So come on in and have a look around. After we've seen the house, we'll go ahead and head back to the Grove. After the bus tour introduction video, students scroll down to virtually visit the inside of each location through ThingLink.
One of Jen and my passions and focuses as innovation teachers is the use of virtual reality in the classroom. Part of the RUSD 2025 plan is to incorporate virtual reality experiences for all students. We knew this would be the perfect opportunity to utilize this technology. During our research for this project, we came across thinglink.com, a web-based program for teachers and students that creates visual experiences for student-centered learning through augmented images, videos, and virtual tours. With this program, we were able to use 360-degree images of specific rooms at the various sites and integrate video narration and text information. Let's take a quick look at some of the ways we were able to use ThingLink to create an interactive virtual tour of AK Smiley Library. Once students click play, they are greeted by a student narrator introducing a location and some items they may see along the way. Established in 1894, AK Smiley Public Library has served generations of patrons in the city of Redlands and beyond. The only admission fee is curiosity. Lifelong learning is at the center of activity in the beautiful historic building and attractive grounds. Students will then see several clickable items. They can click this green eye and read the introduction if they were unable to hear it. They can also click a green magnifying glass to view a closer look at a notable item as well as read or listen to more information. At the library, you can check out books, videos, audiobooks, and music CDs right here at the desk. As they click and hold, they can take a 360 degree view of the room in which they are viewing. From there, they can choose which room they want to visit next. Let's go to the conservatory. This is the conservatory, which is a great place to relax and read. Once students have entered the conservatory, they again have a 360 degree view of the room. They can also read the introduction if they were unable to hear it. After they have viewed the room, there are a few directional arrows they can choose from. They can return to the main entrance, or they can continue exploring. Let's visit the reference wing. This is the reference wing of the library. Have a closer look at some of the beautiful details in this room, like the woodwork on the ceiling. The books in this room can only be read while you're visiting the library. From here, again, students still get the 360 degree view and they can return to the main entrance or continue on in visiting the library. As mentioned earlier, one of the very neat parts about this virtual tour is taking students to places that they may not get to see if they were on the in-person tour. I'm gonna go back to the main entrance of the library. Let's visit the North Wing for a surprise. The library provides public co computers. It also offers many programs for both children and adults, including the fourth grade tours of Redlands led by volunteers of Smiley Heritage Tours. Normally when students come on the in-person tour, they don't get to go up these tower stairs. However, in this virtual tour, You'll notice that there is a directional arrow that leads up the stairs. Let's see what's up there. It was important to capture the stairway as well because it's very, very narrow. And if students take a 360 degree view, they can actually see just how small this hallway is. There's even a caution narrow stairs, watch your step sign. Let's continue up. Take a look around. Can you see the mountains? This is the tower in the library. Normally people are not allowed up here, especially the students on the tour. So this is one of those special things that they get to see just by being on the virtual tour. We also were able to give them a great view 
as if they were there. Here's a view from the library tower. Once students have visited all of the, lo the locations, they can return to the main entrance. Established in 1894. A Pause if they've already heard the introductions. And either continue and, and explore on things they might have missed before. Or they can exit the tour and move on to their next location. We are fortunate to have Jennifer Vadney on our instructional technology team. She is our resident ArcGIS Esri liaison. When asked, Jen enthusiastically agreed to create a story map, including viewing locations of the Mill Creek Zanha. For added student engagement, Jen added each of the RUSD schools so students can locate the historic canal in relation to their respective schools. Students can click on the link to learn more about the history of the Zanha and its path. When they open the link, an arrow indicates that they can scroll down. The text explains a little more about the 12 mile canal and how the blue section of the map identifies areas where the Zanha can be seen, whereas the red portion indicates where the canal goes underground. Each of the Redlands Unified Public Schools are included on the map. For some students, the Zanha runs right along their school property. The next section gives tips on how to use the story map and an opportunity for teachers to introduce the compass rose. As we move down the page, you'll see that Jen used the sidecar component to provide text and images that complement the aerial view of each location. As we click on the viewpoint, the map zooms in and students get a closer look at the location as well as the use of academic directional words. To make connections for the students, the 15 different viewpoints include familiar landmarks such as nearby schools, the Orange Blossom Trail, the U of R, and the Redland Skate Park. As teachers, we are always looking for ways to assess student learning and incorporate our California common core standards with everything we present to our students in an engaging format. When we take our students on field trips, it aligns with what is being taught in the classroom and is an extension of the learning. This is no different with the virtual field trip. Escape rooms have increased in popularity over the past few years, and thus virtual escape rooms have also become popular in educational settings. An escape room usually begins with a theme, so what is a better theme for a virtual field trip than Escape the Bus? Nicole House, one of our team's instructional technology coaches, compiled a list of questions that could be answered by completing the tour in a Google form. The only way to escape the bus is to correctly answer the questions. If students successfully escape, they receive a certificate of completion. Adding this piece to our virtual tour affords teachers the opportunity to provide this historical tradition to students in an asynchronous setting, allowing students to explore at their own pace. As you can probably tell, this project really was a labor of love for both Olivia and I. We appreciate the opportunity to provide this experience to the fourth grade students in our community. We can't thank you enough for, for giving us the time to share our efforts with you. We are available and welcome any questions or feedback that you may have to offer. Thank you again. All right, I think that we are ready for a little Q&A. You see all our, uh, our folks there ready to uh, answer some questions. So um, I will read off um, the questions that have come in. Um, there's still time to ask additional questions. So um, our first question comes from someone um, who may be familiar to you, Miss Serena, uh, Kelsey Davis who I think also went on a tour herself when she was uh, in fourth grade, right? So her question is, um, while this virtual tour seems outstanding, 
Will aspects of the virtual experience continue to be available even after in-person tours resume? Yes, Kelsey, very lovely question. <laughs> I swear I didn't prompt her for that. Uh, <laughs> yes, we're very excited and uh, Jamie or Jen or Olivia may have something to add too, but we are very excited that it will be used as a resource uh, for, for students in the future that are possibly not able to go on the physical tour, but it will also be used as a companion to the uh, actual tours for the future. And I think it's gonna be outstanding in that, that role. Okay, yes, so, the, so kids could even go on the tour and then, um, then go back and look at the map maybe to show their families or, or that kind of thing. Yes, we, we are suggesting the map is in there for the uh, kids hopefully to share with uh, their families to go on a driving tour and see the things again if they've already been on the tour and you know just it reinforce the things they see and, and use it as a tool for the future to uh, be a companion to the tour. Okay, terrific. And have um, our students using it using this now? I mean, has it been used this school year? Uh, it was just released actually uh, this month and um, Jen and Jamie and Olivia got it all out to everyone and we were also able to get it to the private schools that, um, that uh, go on the tour. And so yes, everybody's using it. I spoke with a fourth grade teacher friend of mine on uh, Sunday and she said that several of her students have already uh, gotten their families in the car and followed the map around to see some of the places and she's actually showing uh, each location, um, like one a day, taking one day uh, after their testing is done. Terrific. All right, let's see. I've got another question that asked, is the coloring book for sale anywhere? I'll answer that one. When we started the project, a number of people said, hey, let's use this as a fundraiser. And we thought it over and we thought, no, we want it to be special for the fourth graders. So no, it is not for sale. It is not for sale. Okay, so you have to you have to go find a fourth grader, right? And um, and maybe they'll maybe they'll agree to to share theirs with you. Um, all right. So we did have one comment um, from somebody who did who didn't like the music that was in the background. Um, so I, I so you know you you ask for questions and comments. So I um, I thought I would just throw that out um, out there. Can't please everyone, right? Um, all right, so um, this person asked, how can we access the virtual tour? And I, I assume that it's at this um, bit.ly link that is um, up in the corner there. So um, you can just go to, an, to um, your browser, right? And put in the bit.ly forward slash for smiley tour, is that right? And that'll take you to um, the actual tour page that, um, that um, Jen was um, was showing everyone. So and and it it's fine, right? It's not unlike the coloring book. Even if you're not a fourth grader, you can you can go through this tour, right? The, the only thing that we'll add here is that it's not a public link. So if you went to the internet and you searched it, you wouldn't find it. Um, it's really just a word of mouth kind of thing, um, because like Tish and Serena said, we we do want this to be special. And we really focused on the fourth graders. But at the same time, we knew that it was just an amazing thing for just parents and siblings and, and even other community members. So we, we did want to make sure that it was live for others to view as well. Okay, great. I'd also like to add um, our, that, oh, that I'm it, sorry. Just... That's okay. I just wanted to make sure and add that it's case sensitive, that link. So the four capital S for smiley, capital T for tour. If you don't have um, the capitals in there, the link won't work. Okay, thank you. Cause that not all links are like that. So I appreciate that. So our friends, um, Jim and Deb Fallows have been watching from Washington DC and uh, they put in a question. They said, are you aware of any other cities that are doing this? It seems like a great idea. And any other cities model that was an inspiration for Redlands approach? Um, I don't know, Tish might want to speak to that too. Uh, we do not know of any other cities that do this. Um, there was no model for it. Um, the ladies from the Assistance League of Redlands that put it together initially, several of them were teachers. And I think they 
just decided that the fourth grade curriculum would go very nicely with a little uh, local history. And so, yeah, no, not, no other tours that we know anywhere like it. And in terms of an actual virtual tour, um, same thing. We, we did not have an example to go by. And so that's kind of like what I was talking about in my introduction, that the fun of this whole thing was to invent it. And um, so it, it was just a, a um, collaboration and creativity. That's terrific. Well, um, with um, with Jim and Deb involved, um, you know, this this little um, gem may be passed along to some um, other cities because I think they um, they have in mind to to write about this and um, and put it out there, which would be um, which would be terrific. Um, let's see. Cassie McDuff asked, uh, what about the virtual tour? Is it accessible to the public? And it is right. Um, but I think that what they're saying is that you need to write this link down. You can't go back later and and search for it um, because they were trying to keep it um, special for the fourth graders. But there's no there's no technical reason or anything else like that. Right. Any other reason why people can't um, access it. No, we found that a lot of people were interested in the project as we started making it. It was originally designed just to be for fourth graders. Um, so what we did is when we published the website, we published it as unlisted. So that way people who have the link um, and then created the bit.ly, those who have the link can access it, but it's not searchable. Got it. Okay. Oh, Cassie said she meant the, the GIS map um, for the Zonha. Is that publicly available? The story map, I assume she means. I don't believe it's been published independently. I can check with Jen Vadney on that when I get back to work tomorrow. Um, okay. But it is accessible through the um, website. Uh, there's a link on our website, on the Smiley Tour website. If you go to the Zanha, then that'll take you to the ArcGIS map. Oh, okay, perfect. Okay, so once once you get to the, to the tour link. Um, all right, I think we... Uh, I don't see any other questions. Oh, wait, here's one more. Um, let's see, Sherry Dawes asks, um, do the kids get a copy of the recipe so that they can make and enjoy the cookies, the Mrs. Shirk's gin cookies? Yes, they do. Well, they, <laughs> let's say teachers usually ask for it and we make it available to the teachers and that there's a resource kit that we send out to the schools ahead of time and that does include the, recipe, the uh, cookie recipe. Terrific. So do you guys um, plan to continue to do the Realia um, visits? I mean, when you go back to the in-person? Yeah, yes. As soon as we're um, able to do them in person, we will be doing those again for sure. Terrific. And if, if there's any, oh, were you going to say something, Tish? Yeah, just that as you could see from the picture of Realia, that's one the the... I mean, we, we show everything, but what the kids love more than anything is crowding around the table and trying everything out. So we have to right. make sure kids can really crowd together and touch everything. Right, right. Okay. Um, shoot, I had another question and now it's escaped me. Um, I, I'll, I'll, I'll mention. I'll, I'll go ahead, Jen. Okay. I was going to say one of the things we're most excited about is that this will be a companion for them in the future. Um, either as teachers can use it as an introductory, hey, this is what we're going to see, or teachers can use it after the fact, hey, you guys went and checked out these places, let's learn a little bit more about it, let's go back and revisit, or go home and tell your families. So it gives a lot of options to have them work together. And, and it'll also, of course, be available for children who aren't physically able to go on the bus tour. Right, right. Um, okay, so Monty Stuck has added uh, do you plan to add the Museum of Redlands to the tour when the Museum of Redlands is open? That would be a dream. The, the um, limitations we have are um, bus schedules and, and student teacher class schedules. <laughs> and we cram an awful lot in there, but we are um, all very excited about the museum and hope to definitely be promoting that uh, and being involved with that for sure. We would love to introduce that, so. Terrific, that the, the museum also might be a great thing to do a virtual tour of, um, you know, eventually as well, um, might interest uh, people to, to go down in person. Um, all right, I think that we have come to the end of our 
questions exactly at 6.30, man, can't make that up. Um, anything else that, that any of you all would like to add? I, I really, um, I so appreciate you um, sharing this with, every, with everyone. I think that the, the fourth grade heritage tours have been a, a hidden gem for a long time. If you, didn't, if you didn't have a fourth grader, you weren't really aware um, that, it, that it happened. So I think that um, it's great for people to find out about it and even more wonderful um, to learn how you've um, adapted it um, during the pandemic. So, and I, I also have to share that, that these folks, when, when we were on a call earlier this week, kind of doing some, some housekeeping about tonight, they all uh, mentioned how much they've enjoyed getting to know each other um, through this process. And um, I think that's, that's always a, a terrific outcome as well. So we really appreciate, oh, I know what I was gonna ask. If you, if somebody that is listening would like to uh, become a volunteer with um, Smiley Heritage Tours. Um, how would they? Um, how would they raise their hand to be a part of that? That would be um, probably very. We very much welcome that, and that would be probably contact the library, and then they can give their information, and we'll get it. They will get it to us, and we can get uh, that person talking with our volunteer chairman and our and then the rest of us. Terrific. Okay. And I know you train everybody. In that, so. Yeah, I'll just add that we kind of anticipate we nobody knows for sure what's happening next year, but it's possible we'll have to take more bus trips to accommodate some social distancing. So I suspect we'd be very welcoming of new volunteers. Okay. Terrific. All right. Well, any other um, last words of wisdom from um, all of you all? Thank you so much for having us. I think we all, we're all very happy about this project and really very excited to be able to share it with you all. Yeah, this was, this was a, a, a terrific exposure of a, a true Redlands treasure um, that not, not, as, not enough people know about. So thank you for sharing it with us. All right, good night, everyone. Have a good uh, summer. And we will see you probably sometime in, in August with a, a surprise guest to be announced. So thanks very much for all your support.